the water of Flint, Michigan has been poisoned. The problems began when the city switched its water source to the Flint River to save money. But the corrosive river water wasn't properly treated and stripped lead from pipes. Children were being contaminated by lead. Lowered IQ, emotional problems, behavioral problems. This is the personal health equivalent of having been shot. Leanne Walters started noticing physical and developmental delays in her kids. We found out my child had lead poisoning. We were told by the state nurse, it's just a few IQ points. It's not the end of the world. Leanne blamed the water. I went up to the emergency manager. He's like, I don't believe that's your water. No more poison! No more poison! Complaints were met with aggressive dismissal, belittlement, and attempts to discredit. City officials continue to say the water meets all state and federal standards. We're not making any recommendations for changed behavior. The city's still putting out reports. Here's the plan. But the water's fine, and it's not. I decided we need to get to the science if anyone was ever going to believe us. I started researching and educating myself about water because people had a right to know. Her story sparked researchers to do their own testing. They were the worst results we've seen in 25 years. When pediatricians hear about lead anywhere, we freak out. A local doctor started studying blood samples from kids in Flint. Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha led the study on children. What we found was alarming. The percentage of children with elevated lead levels doubled in the whole city. And in some neighborhoods, it tripled. So we shared these results at a press conference. Right away, the state attacked me. The state of Michigan tried to dismiss her study. I was called an unfortunate researcher that I was splicing and dicing numbers. When the state tells you you're wrong, you second guess yourself. But that lasted just a short period, and we told them why, no, you were wrong. Two weeks later, officials acknowledged her findings were correct. President Obama declared Flint, Michigan, a disaster area, clearing the way for federal aid. It took a village of incredibly brave people to expose this. This was the ultimate betrayal for the citizens. I wouldn't shut up. They messed with the wrong mama. My personal mission in this now is to change the way the state is testing for lead and copper. My job as a pediatrician is to make sure that the kids have the brightest future ahead of them. Our story is not done. We have to give them hope. We'll hopefully inspire others to use their voices when they see injustices to speak up. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamie Goodell. And Tony Goodell. I'm here to present the pen. What am I doing here? I don't know. I'm here to present the Tony and James Goodell Award to our two charming guests on my right. And I'm very proud to do so. Uh, doctor, you were quite right to say that your neighbor here should not be messed with by the state of Michigan. And if I may so say so, the state of Michigan shouldn't mess, mess with you either. You both showed great courage in taking on the state of Michigan. Thank you. By presenting this award to Leanne and Mona, we do hope to inspire others who discover injustices to have the courage to speak up as they did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
thank you, or, or we'll never get to dessert. Thank you. <laughs> it is an incredible honor to stand here today to receive this award. Um, and most incredibly, it's an honor to stand here next to Leanne Walters. And in Flint, we would be nowhere without Leanne. Her stubbornness, her effective activist, activism started the domino effect. And without her, our children would still be drinking lead-tainted lead water. She is definitely a mama that you do not want to mess with. She's amazing. I also briefly want to recognize my parents and my daughter who are here. If you could please stand up. My, my parents instilled in me the values that led me to stand up. We are Iraqi American. We left Iraq when I was five years old, 35 years ago, so I just aged myself, um, because we did not have the freedom of, of expression. My grandfather was a political prisoner. He lost his job and his career because he spoke up. My dad, when he went away to college, the Baathists came in power, and my grandmother had to wrap all of his books with red blankets and hide them underground. Um, so we understand the meaning of freedom of, exp of expression. Um, and even when we came to the States, they led by example and kept speaking up, especially of the atrocities that continued in Iraq, uh, the poisoning of children in Halabsha. And that is how I grew up. That was the background of my childhood, which is very much in my DNA and is the DNA of Penn. Um, on a lighter note, my daughter is here. She is 10, and she came here to see Miss Rowling because <laughs> Miss Rowling, through, through your books, through your Harry Potter series, you have taught us, taught children, millions of children to stand up, and you have taught us um, to stand up against racism and against justice, or for justice, so thank you. Thank you. And I just wanna end by sharing that our story is nowhere near over in Flint. We are in our third year of water that we cannot drink. One month ago, we had a home with a lead level of 22,905 parts per billion, and the EPA action level is 15 parts per billion. So our story is nowhere near done, um, and we had many, 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 many courageous um, people who were expressing um, their words and, and going to town hall meetings and standing up with brown water and trying to have their voices heard. But Flint was a town that lost its democracy. And when you have no democracy, who listens to those voices? Um, but people, many, many, many moms and journalists and experts from Virginia Tech and brave EPA officials, I mean, they were all dismissed and they were ridiculed. And when I shared evidence that our children were being dismissed, I was ridiculed and I was dismissed and I was scared and I wanted to hide under a blanket. Um, and I second guessed myself, and I guess when you have, you can't have courage without fear, and I had that fear, but you know, you have to have that fear, and that's how you grow, and that's how you, you, save, you save cities, I guess. <laughs> um, so uh, already the story of Flint, perhaps just like the story of Rachel Carson, um, where her story with DDT has changed the conversation, not only about lead, but about water, but about democracy, about austerity, about environmental racism, about indifferent bureaucracies, about deadly infrastructure. But most importantly, it's a story about forgotten places and forgotten people. But I want to leave you with a, a little bit of hope. We're hoping to flip the story in Flint, and we're hoping to build something that's never been built before for our children because these children did nothing wrong besides live in a poor city that did, didn't treat its water properly. Um, so come back and visit us in 10, 20 years, and you'll hear Flint um, be, be known for a story of hope, um, especially for our children who rose up from this and, and thrived because of this disaster. Um, so I'm going to take it over to Leanne because I spoke too much. I feel honored and blessed to be here to receive the 2016 Tony and James C. Goodall Freedom of Expression Courage Award. I want to say thank you to my best friend, who is my husband, Dennis, who cannot be here tonight, who has been my rock through all of this, and thank you to my amazing children, Kaylee, JD, Gavin, and Garrett, with all the, out there, all their love and support, the crazy hours that we spend doing this would not be possible. <laughs> I want to say thank you to the first people to believe me when nobody else would, which would be Miguel Del Toro from the EPA and Professor Mark Edwards. They are two of the best mentors that anybody could ever ask for in this. I want to congratulate Dr. Mona, 
who is also being honored here. Thank you for all your hard work on behalf of the children of Flint and your efforts to ensure that our children have the brightest futures possible. I want every resident in Flint to know that I am not accepting this award just for myself, but for every one of us who was ridiculed, dismissed, and demeaned and ignored in our fight for clean water. We are one. We, were, we are given this award because we refused to be silenced. Flint's crisis is far from over. We are still fighting for medical coverage for adults who have been affected. We are still fighting for safe, clean water. I will continue to speak out until Flint and every other community in the United States has led free water. I will continue to fight. I will continue to fight until the lead and copper rule is properly revised to protect people. I will not stop until I'm assured no mother will ever be asked again by her child, mommy, is this clean water or yucky water? Like my five-year-old twins ask me daily. Because of what my family and the other families in Flint continue to go through, I, along with other Flint residents, have now launched a nonprofit to assist the forgotten in this. I thank you again for having me here tonight. Some say it's courage, some say it's heroism, but I'm honestly just a mom doing what moms do, protecting their children. Thank you.